the gravity of the time is such that every new avenue of peace, no matter how dimly discernible, should be explored. Never before in history has so much hope for so many people been gathered together in a single organization. You will provide a great share of the wisdom, of the courage, and the faith which can bring to this world lasting peace for all nations and happiness and well-being for all men. So we are here today with Princess Ntobeni, who is the founder of Africa for Nuclear. Princess, welcome so much finally to Titans of Nuclear. Thank you so much, Olivia. Hello, everyone. So uh, we're really excited to have you here today. And um, to kick it off, we want to learn a little bit about you and how you got into the nuclear space. Can you tell us a little bit about your story and, and what initially brought you to nuclear and why you stayed? Definitely, I can. I have such an interesting story. How, OK. My, okay, I work as a nuclear communicator. Mm -hmm. I'm a nuclear communication specialist mm -hmm. uh, for one of the nuclear organizations in South Africa. Right. But I'm also a founder of Africa for Nuclear, mm -hmm. which is an advocacy campaign that promotes nuclear as a key contributor to achieving Africa's agenda for sustainable development. Mm -hmm. How I got into the nuclear industry, it was by mistake, mm -hmm. because I was out of a job and I was looking for a job very young. Mm -hmm. And I get a call from a recruiter saying, you have to go for an interview at this organization. I don't even know the name of the organization at that time. Then I travel about, what, 100 kilometers mm -hmm. to get to that organization. And I first get to the wrong place. Mm -hmm. Then when I called the recruiter and then I was told that, no, you are still 30 cases away <laughs> before you get here. And then I got there. The interview was at 10 o'clock. Then I got there at 2 p.m. Oh my goodness. I'm tired, I'm hungry, I'm exhausted. Then I, I'm like, you know what? I don't even know what's happening here. This doesn't even look like a legit company. Mm -hmm. And then there's security clearance access that I have to go through. Then I'm like, you know what? Let me just do this interview and go back home and never come back here. Yeah. Then I get in, I do an interview and I get a call next week to say, come back and work. And the rest is history. Yeah. And where, where did you end up working? I ended up in that organization. Oh, okay. Yes, and I'm still in there even now because, oh. I, yeah, you know when something is a calling for you? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And so, so you, you were totally unfamiliar with nuclear at that point, Never right? heard of it before. Never heard of it. And what was it about nuclear that really, once you started working there, got you hooked, that made you want to start an organization like Africa for Nuclear? It, it's, it's that, you know, I realized that this so much that as Africans we are deprived of mm -hmm. uh, information particularly mm -hmm. especially things that matter to us things that would change our economy mm -hmm. because nuclear is one of those things that is really you know beneficial to, to the you know spin-off of the economy mm -hmm. and I said to myself you know what I will shoulder the responsibility of going out there and educate people about this yes. technology so that they make informed decisions because it's it's, it's one of the best technologies that Africa needs, especially a continent that suffers from energy poverty. Absolutely, absolutely. And South Africa is the only nuclear nation on the African continent right now, correct? Yeah, and I know a lot of great nuclear engineers uh, sort of are have been, um, uh, you know, educating themselves in, in South Africa, but then they've been leaving for jobs in other countries. So the more that you can um, develop more nuclear in, in South Africa and really create a, a nuclear culture there, like there is in a country like France, you know, I'm sure the better uh, for the sort of the longevity of, of, of a nuclear program there. It, for me, it's a sad story because we have South Africans spread all over the world, right. you know, building other countries' economy yeah. when their economy is this is getting destroyed yeah. and I do wish that they can come back home yeah. but the only way for them to come back home is if this you know decision to build nuclear power plants at home so that they come and, and build in their own country yeah and what are the current plans to develop new nuclear in South Africa are, are, is there anything currently underway there's definitely there is uh, something underway we number one we have a policy which is due for review 
and that policy promotes energy mix, yeah. which includes nuclear, uh, particularly 2,500 megawatts of nuclear capacity. And the government has, in the implementation of that policy, the government has issued out the request for information, and they are in the process of issuing out the request for proposals where they invite you know, bidders to come and pitch. Interesting, interesting. And you know, the, one of the interesting things about nuclear is that given its carbon-free baseload pa- uh, uh, capabilities, it is not only uh, an energy source for sort of grid-scale applications, but it's really great for certain industrial applications that can provide resources like desalination, which I know is also a huge concern in South Africa. It is. Um, we are a water stress country. Yeah. And at some point, Cuba helped us yeah. to basically desalinate the seawater. And, and also, South Africa is among the top four producers of new oil and exporters wow. of nuclear medicine globally. Wow, yes. that's fascinating. And are there any SMRs that are currently um, uh, looking at developing in South Africa or have, have made public announcements in South Africa that you're aware of? Yes, you know, I always say the story of SMR started in South Africa. Really? With Pebble Bed Modular oh, Reactor. Okay. Yes, of course. Yes, which was put under current maintenance in 2010. Uh-huh. Yes. So now every country has an SMR except South Africa, which is a sad situation. But we do hope that uh, soon we are also going to have our own SMR technology. But yeah, SMR, uh, you know, one of the technologies that we are advocating for, yeah. because you know that we are mostly powered by coal. Right. Yeah, right. so some of those coal power plants are aging and they need to be repurposed. And for me, the best solution is, is nuclear, nuclear SMR. Absolutely. Yes. So tell us a little bit about Africa for Nuclear and um, and what you're trying to achieve and how you, how you started it. It started as a campaign when I just wanted to advocate for nuclear programs on the African continent, obviously looking into different stakeholders. But uh, the main stakeholders were policymakers, the government, people, because we need a political will. And once we have that political will, I believe we can achieve just about anything. But also we need to advocate members of the public to join into the fight of, you know, fighting for nuclear problems on the African continent. So that's how it started. And then um, it grew into a non-profit organization. Oh, yes. Um, now, um, what we have achieved as Africa for Nuclear is that at least it's recognized globally. Yes. I mean, it's known. Many people know Princey from mm-hmm. Africa for Nuclear. Yes. And uh, yeah, even government at home, they getting familiar with Africa for Nuclear. And I think that's basically what I want. But for me, if I say Africa for Nuclear has achieved something, mm-hmm. would be the day when I see the first concrete being poured yeah. for a nuclear power plant anywhere else in Africa. Yeah, so so you guys don't just focus on South Africa, you're looking at, at all or any African country yeah. that is interested in building nuclear. Yes. And where are you seeing a lot of interest right now? I'm seeing a lot of interest in Ghana. Interesting. Ghana is pushing and yeah. I think Ghana will have an SMR before anyone else in Africa. Yes. That's fascinating. And um, and so how, how long ago did you launch this campaign initially? It's since 2021. Okay, yes, it's really new. Yes, yes, so there's lots yes. of opportunities still. Yes. Well, that's really interesting, and I know there's also interest in, I think, Nigeria and um, and in some of the um, sort of North African countries as well. I know Egypt, I know Egypt. there's a lot of interest. Egypt is there. building. Oh, yeah. yes, really. thank you for mentioning yes. that. Egypt is currently constructing a new power plant. Wow, that's very exciting. That'll that'll be great. And yeah, I mean, providing that energy security is is so critical, uh, is. and nuclear is, is such a valuable resource there. And also, I believe a lot of um, a lot of uranium is mined in in African countries already. So, right? Is that correct? <laughs> it says it is yeah. mined in them. Yeah. You, so yeah, it's I know sort of a about nice uranium. Story yes. of bringing it back to you know the pl- the resources back to the places that yes. uh, that it's coming from. Well, yes. that's fascinating. So why are you here at, at WNE? What is what is your role here today? First, I have to say it's my first time here, and I'm loving it. Yes. I'm here because I was invited by the organizers to come and chair a panel session on advancing nuclear through sustainable territorial and sustainable development as well as digitalization that's very exciting and um have you had any sort of 
uh, very critical meetings or conversations here. You know, what has your experience been? Are you, do, do you feel like this is a really valuable conference to attend? I, I think it is, especially for, you know, businesses yeah. and uh-huh. people, countries that want to build yeah. and, and want to meet this uh, and to see how these techno- different technology work. And I think it's best for them. And for me, I think it's best to see how these you know mock-up models are Absolutely. built so that I, I also try to help African countries to have these mock-ups so that they go to the public and educate the public because seeing is believing. If I take a mock-up of a reactor and show people how it works, then they will start believing. So I think, I haven't been here before, but from what I heard is that it's proof this year yeah. because even students are coming from the first day whereas previously they only came in the last day. And I'm so happy happy that tomorrow I'm addressing students. I can't wait. Yes, yes, absolutely. And this is my second time here. It's definitely bigger this year. Way more people. Uh, It's really great to see all these folks in the nuclear industry come out, especially given the um, uh, COP meetings next week. I know there was some concern maybe that people wouldn't be able to make it, but it seems like that hasn't really stopped very many people. So that's really, it's really exciting. Yeah. It is. I was saying there's so many people here. Yeah. (laughs) It's it's fascinating. And to think that all of us tomorrow, I'm I'm flying to COP tomorrow evening. Yes. I'm like, yo, there's so many people. I know. I I feel like there's, it's sort of everyone's traveling together almost. So what are you going to be doing at COP? I'm going to be making nuclear part of the script because we know it's a scripted event yes, but yeah yes. i just want nuclear as part of the script and yeah. it has worked before because we managed to get nuclear uh, in the green taxonomy of Absolutely. europe so yes. I, I hope we achieve something after this cop as well yeah and so exciting that uh nuclear is such a big part of cop this year it is i can't wait for the pledge uh, american yes. pledge yes yes to be, know, to be unveiled yes. yes i know our team is uh is heavily involved and is is working on on some things there and, and they're excited to be attending and excited to be seeing all the other folks from the nuclear industry that uh you know we, we get to talk to every day so and um you know it's been great to see how the government of the uae has been so supportive obviously they have an incredibly successful nuclear program they're really such a, a great example of building a program from scratch and how you can do that and finish it on time finish it on time on budget you know, yes right um and you know we've done some great podcast episodes with them about that so uh highly encourage everyone to go listen to listen to that um very excited to hear that you're going to be in dubai as well thank you yes um So as we, you know, wrap up here, I want to give you the opportunity to share your thoughts on, um, you know, your vision for the future of nuclear, both in in South Africa, on the African continent, but also globally. Where do you hope we can can take this technology and what do you hope we can achieve from it? Um, First, um, my vision for Africa is that at least let us try and and, and focus on addressing the energy poverty and let us make nuclear part of the energy mix. And as... By saying part of the energy mix, I'm saying let's consider all technologies that have worked in developed nations because we cannot reinvent a whole. We can't think of things that have not worked somewhere else. So let's think of things that have worked in developed nations. And nuclear has worked. Yes. And for uh, globally, I mean, they are speaking about net zero carbon emissions by 2050. And how else are we going to achieve that without including nuclear as part of the uh, energy mix? So, yeah. That's just my vision to say, let's work towards the target of net zero carbon emissions by 2050. Absolutely. Well, Princess, it was such a pleasure having you on. You are our most requested guest today. We had several people come over and ask us when you were coming. So I'm so glad we made it happen. Thank you so much for joining us on Titans of Nuclear. Thank you, Titans of Nuclear. This is long overdue, by the way. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) Glad glad we got it done. And initiate at least a new approach to the many difficult problems that must be solved in both private and public conversation. If the world is to take off the inertia imposed by fear and is to make positive progress toward peace.